His Excellency Deputy Prime Minister of Vietnam, Huang Trung Hai, members of the civil society, UN colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I am very honored to address this important conference. I very much regret not being with you in person, and I truly appreciate your flexibility in letting me join you in this low carbon fashion. This important conference is the first major community level adaptation conference following the UN Climate Change Conference in Durban last year. As such, it represents a key opportunity to connect all the dots, the policy dots with the implementation dots and the international level dots to the national and local level dots. Connecting the dots is important to really get the adaptation agenda moving and to unleash an unprecedented drive for adaptation implementation. Amid ever increasing numbers of extreme weather events, you know as well as I do that adaptation is becoming ever more critical. The most vulnerable need on the ground actions to reduce the burden of climate change impacts. The Climate Convention recognizes the specific needs and special circumstances of developing country, especially those that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. Numerous decisions taken by governments over the years consider the local level within the adaptation process. Yet over the years, two points of concern have increasingly come to the fore. First, that adaptation policy and approaches have developed in a highly fragmented manner. And second, that successful adaptation at the community level depends on the involvement of all stakeholders. In response, in 2010, governments established the Cancun Adaptation Framework to boost adaptation action through international cooperation. As part of this framework, the Adaptation Committee was established to support better planning and implementation of adaptation measures through increased financial and technical support and through strengthening and or establishing regional centers and networks. The committee was officially launched in Durban. During 2012, the committee will develop its three-year work plan, including details on how it intends to engage all adaptation-related work, both inside and outside the UNFCCC process. In other words, the committee will play a major role in connecting the dots between policy and implementation. The first meeting of the committee is tentatively scheduled for the beginning of May in Bonn. In Durban, progress was also made on the planning for adaptation, further connecting the dots between policy and implementation. The key planning tool is the National Adaptation Plan, which will enable countries to build adaptive capacity and resilience and to facilitate the integration of adaptation into development planning. This process is its in, in its design phase and presents greater opportunities for countries and various partners to engage and ensure the integration of specific needs and provisions to be laid out for particularly vulnerable communities. Work on the design of technical guidelines has begun. The ethical guidelines will cover all scales for assessing and implementing adaptation measures from the local community level to whole sector and national levels. The insights from the CBA conference will be very useful in informing the LDC expert group on the state of practice at the community level. These developments are key milestones in the evolving field of adaptation policy. They are equally critical in the context of preparing for the implementation of adaptation action. Yet implementing adaptation will entail more than good government policies and planning. The complete connection of the dots between policy and implementation depends on a proactive approach that is participatory and involves all sectors, including business and civil society. Put differently, just as no single country can successfully address adaptation on its own, so too no single entity within a country will be able to act effectively.
effectively on adaptation. While national governments set the policies, it falls to subnational governments, the aid community, civil society, communities, and in some cases, business, to actually make the difference on the ground. I therefore urge you, the key partners in implementation and stakeholders in the adaptation agenda, to fully engage in the new adaptation institutions and tools to ensure that they deliver for those who have to bear a disproportionate burden of impacts. While forms of stakeholder engagement are being advanced, one current important way of engaging is through submissions to the Climate Secretariat. Another way of engaging would be through making success stories of adaptation action more widely known so that policymakers can see the fruits of their policies and connect the dots between policy and action in a self-reinforcing loop. It is only through a vertical integration of policy and action that countries will be able to move toward higher resilience. My best wishes go to you for a successful conference, and I look forward to hearing the details of its outcomes. Thank you.